Okay, now I am here with uh, Benjamin at uh, Trezor and we are uh, going to, to make some tests uh, directly uh, to the console, to, uh, to a computer. So, Benjamin, what do you want to show us? So today I will show you uh, two important features for the Trezor Model T, which is our flagship model mm -hmm. in production. Also for comparison, I can just show you our very first hardware wallet, the Trezor Model 1. So we kick-started the whole hardware wallet industry right here in Prague, in Czech Republic. Um, both devices generate your keys offline, they store your keys, uh, they never leave the device. Um, so we don't have any external backup offers. Uh, this is entrusted to you and your recovery seed card, which I can also show. So ship with your device, you'll have a piece of paper like this. So to interrupt. And there's space for you to write down your seed words. On the Model T, we have 12 words. And on the Model 1, we have 24 words. So when you set up the device, it's very important that you keep a safe copy yeah. of your recovery seed. This generates what we call in suite your standard wallet. So the addresses generated using this master private key are first shown in what's called a standard wallet. So this relies purely on having a safe backup of these 12 words. Also, what you can do with your Trezor to have added security and peace of mind is use what we call a hidden wallet. So this is uh, known as a passphrase. And effectively, it adds, for your Model T, it adds a 13th word to your recovery seed. Mm -hmm. The key difference is your passphrase is only stored in your head or somewhere very safe. So you yeah. must remember your passphrase, otherwise your funds will be yeah. irrecoverable. Lost. Yeah. Absolutely lost. <laughs> so. I've already set up the Model T with two hidden wallets. We have some money in both accounts. And I will show you a very quick demonstration of how easy it is to send and receive Bitcoin in Trezor Suite. Yeah. So I can see in hidden wallet two, I have about $20 worth of Bitcoin. And in hidden wallet one, about $16. So say I want to send some money from number two to number one. Of course, in real life, you're probably sending it to a different user with a yeah, different yeah, device. Yeah. But for the demonstration here, we've got multiple wallets generated. So I need to first generate a receive address in Hidden Wallet 1. So I go to my accounts page in Suite. I press receive. And what we do is we try to make sure that all of our users have maximum safety, security, and privacy. So Trezor will automatically generate fresh addresses for every received transaction so that you're never reusing the same address. So I press show full address. I have pin protection enabled on the Model T, so I just have to put in my pin, just for this demonstration. And I can see that Trezor Suite is showing me a QR code representation of the address, which I can scan if I'm sending from a mobile app. Yeah. And here I have the alphanumeric BC1 Bitcoin address. What you should always do is confirm that every character on your Model T matches that shown in Suite. You can always trust the display of your Trezor. This is never compromised. But there is a chance that your laptop may have some malicious yeah. software. So always confirm and do anything important via the touch screen. So if anybody tries to sell you a hardware wallet without a screen, it's not a hardware wallet, OK? So, I can quickly check that these characters match up perfectly, which yeah. they do. It I press confirm. Now it's revealed the copy address button right here. So this goes to my clipboard. I want to navigate back to Hidden Wallet 2, where I want to send the money from. So I quickly go to send. I can paste the address here. There's also a function where you can use a webcam to scan a QR code that might be displayed on a mobile device. For this demo, I'll just put $3 here. You can have uh, some advanced features here. Coin control enables you to choose uh, individual UTXOs. Yep. So. Yep. This is a very important feature. <laughs> yep, and we also have RBF on by default, so if you need to bump the fee for a transaction, yeah. you can go back and increase this. 
fees are quite high now, so just for the demo, I'll set it to low. But you can see an estimated time and fee rate. So we always show you upfront exactly how long we expect and how expensive it um, will be. And uh, ju then, just a question. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, people ask uh, about uh, the possibility also to connect uh, an hardware device uh, even to Electrum, for example, yeah. or Sparrow. Is it possible, I think? Absolutely, also? yeah, they're compatible wallets, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, we're done, we're happy with the fee, we're happy with the time. If it's not an urgent transaction, it's about 15 hours. Yeah. If I go for high, it should be 10 minutes. But actually, the fee is so high in this yeah. case, I don't have enough funds. <laughs> and the no amount, one. yeah. So I see the fee, I see the total, I click review and send. Again, it prompts me to confirm everything yeah, on my yeah. Trezor, so the recipient address is fine, continue. The amount of Bitcoin I'm sending, I press confirm. The summary, which is the total amount, including the fee. I now hold the button to sign the transaction. And then I press send after it's been confirmed on my device. And that's it, it's as that's simple it. as that. Very, and very simple. See the transactions down here that are all pending. These are all of our demonstrations, so we've got 12. Here, we've got the name. We can add a label to a transaction if I want to make sure you can yeah, remember yeah. me exactly. If I need to go back and make the uh, transaction faster, here's the bump fee. So it basically it's the exact same copy of the transaction, and I can replace it with a new higher yeah. fee. And um, uh, just, uh, just a question. Um, this, uh, this application may be also connected to an external node. Yes, For example, you can. Uh, if the user has its own node, uh, you yeah, can... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the default settings in Suite is, is the Satoshi Labs nodes, but if you have your own custom backend set up, yeah. you can connect to that, absolutely. Yeah. And even, even if uh, the node is running uh, under Tor? Yeah, we have uh, actually the Tor switch in Trezor Suite and um, Tor is required for advanced features such as CoinJoin. So if you want to take some UTXOs and make them private, so maybe you've bought some UTXOs or Bitcoin, it's a more friendly term, uh, on an exchange, you can send these to your Trezor. And then with the Model T, and again, this is why it's worth investing a bit more and having the Model T, you can add a CoinJoin account, which is really simple. Just like any other Bitcoin account, you have different account types, and CoinJoin is the latest one here. Mm -hmm. I add this. It takes some time to load, usually, and the connectivity in the hall is a mm -hmm. bit bad, so hopefully it will load. It just asks me if I want to access my CoinJoin account, so I press yes. And it will take some time to load, and fingers mm -hmm. crossed it actually does it live. So uh, it's possible to CoinJoin directly in uh, your application? Yeah, and it's actually the only hardware wallet that you can really do it, uh, it natively. You don't have to use some other application. See, this, this is nice because uh, I remember that, for example, using um, Wasabi, yes. uh, it is impossible to use a device. It's, uh, it's necessary to have um, uh, the key locally. Yeah, so we work, it's actually an implementation of Wasabi protocol, so Trezor and Wasabi have developed this jointly. So if it loads, you can see... So this, this, this implements uh, Wasabi as a, yes. a CoinJoin... Uh, yeah, ah, yeah, I, I heard uh, the, the, the news about this. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they have the best liquidity and it's basically the best uh, pool where you can have your multiple users with funds ready to be CoinJoined. Very, very nice. So it's possible with uh, the Trezor application to uh, coin join directly inside the application using liquidity from uh, uh, Wasabi. Correct? Yeah, they are coordinator. We can even yeah. organize some chat with uh, one of our dev team leaders who implemented coin join in Suite. So we can maybe try and find him. And so all I need to do is load it, which is yeah. great because I was expecting the network to drop. Um, we need to receive something here. So as you saw earlier, it's exactly the same process. I generate my receive address. I do show full address. I confirm it again using my device. Yeah. It's great. And I can go through the same process. Once I've done that, and I've, uh, I can close this now, it's as simple as I add the Bitcoin, I send myself some money. 
I press play, which is this button right here, so, and then I wait for it to happen. So it creates a, a self-transaction, which is uh, inside the conjoin uh, tra multiple. It relies on there being uh, a minimum number of users. Yeah. Um, off the top of my head, I think you can even do it with as few as five people, maybe up to like 500 or so. But the idea is you sent yourself some UTXOs associated with an address. You generate a much larger joint transaction. Yeah. You have the same value and the same number yeah, of yeah. outputs, but now there's no way to trace uh, one UTXO to a particular address. Yeah, yeah. And then you can see this send. So you can spend directly from your CoinJoin account, and it means that they are basically no way that your privacy can be eroded. Very, very nice. Uh, it's, uh, it's very nice uh, because uh, uh, it may be done using the, the hardware device. This is, uh, this is a very nice feature. We've made it, I think, uh, we're always trying to refine our products, but we've made it as user-friendly as possible. Yeah, yeah, it we, is. We had even more customization features on this front page, but we decided most people just wanted to hit play and do it automatically. You can change it if you do a real transaction. You can uh, play with the privacy settings, increase the number of rounds. Yeah. But for most people, we have uh, the presets, which are absolutely fine. Yeah. Very, very nice. Uh, Benjamin, I thank you very much for this uh, demo. It's uh, very nice for my audience, so it's... Uh, it will be interesting for all the people watching this video. Thank you so much, and uh, okay, thank you. Thank Enjoy you the rest of your day. Thank you.